Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Auto Focus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is all of focus and we'll be right back after this short break. Dad? Dad? You okay? Iwan mo na yan. Ako na bahala dyan. Let's go. Hatid ko na kayo. Tara! Excuse me? <coughs> Let's go! Thank you. You always have my back. Have fun. I will. I'm 36, I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. The new Suzuki Patara. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Volkswagen. Shortly after its debut in the Philippines, the Volkswagen Lamando comes in with additional features and details. What's new with the well-loved sedan? Find out here on this week's car review. First things first, the exterior. The design and styling of the Lamando is one that looks familiar while also offering something different. The strong character lines that hug the body of the compact sedan as well as the black sunroof give off a powerful stance. The car powers through the roads with 17-inch alloy wheels. Let's check out the interior of the Lamando. Inside, the Lamando offers generous legroom, headroom, and cabin space. Both driver's and rear seats are comfortable thanks to the leather material. Speaking of seats, the driver's seat comes in electric eight-way adjustable, while the front passenger seat comes in four-way manual. For added comfort convenience, the Lamando is equipped with a two-zone Climatronic air conditioning, power steering, power door locks, and power windows. When it comes to the infotainment system, the Lamando 
comes with the Active Info Display, which features a 9.2-inch infotainment audio system with eight speakers, available in CD, MP3, AUX, Bluetooth, USB, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto Connectivity. It's time to check out what's under the hood of the Lamando. Powering the Lamando is a 1.4-liter, four-cylinder, inline turbo fuel injected gasoline engine with blue motion technology. On top of that, the turbocharged stratified injection or TSI mated with the seven speed direct shift gear transmission combines the convenience of an automatic and the fuel efficiency of a manual. It gives out 150 horsepower and maximum torque of 250 Newton meters. When it comes to safety and security, the Lamando is equipped with a roster of features that ensure nothing less. It includes anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, stability control, parking sensors, hill start assist, tire pressure monitor, ISO fix, and six airbags. That was all about the Volkswagen Lamando. Its tough yet friendly features make it a sought-after sedan. Our car review this week. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. I'm 36. I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. The new Suzuki Patara. Designed to get back from any adventure. Every day without fail. I'm getting stronger. Being tough is not enough, so we keep testing. In the pursuit of ultimate toughness and reliability, the new Strata, engineered beyond tough. Drive your ambition, Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. Ford Philippines recently held the awarding ceremonies for the annual Henry Ford Awards at One Canvas Events Place, Makati. Now on its 19th year, the HFA has served as a platform in recognizing the important role of journalists in taking the country's automotive industry forward. So this award-giving body is the first of its kind in the country as it recognizes excellence in automotive journalism. This is very important for us as we give back the honor and the pride uh, that all our Filipino motoring journalists really deserve. This year, the HFA introduced an all-digital submission for all entries, harnessing the speed and precision in using a fully digital platform to submit. Harnessing the speed and precision in using a fully digital platform to submit, accommodate, and even evaluate entries without the need for paper submissions. It's a very rigorous process of selection. We have 16 categories all in all, and it really involved a lot of deliberations. We have two phases for this particular judging process where we had a lot of academicians for phase one and we have esteemed corporate communications practitioners for phase two. So from there, we have been uh, able to announce the winners for tonight. Secondly, the HFA 
launched the new Best Automotive Website category, which recognizes the power of digital platforms in informing, educating, and influencing the Filipino motorist. So this 19th Henry Ford Awards, we have introduced the Best Automotive Website, which really recognized the importance of the digital platform in informing and influencing the Filipino motorist. So we have been lucky to have been including this uh, particular category. And Below are the winners in the 16 categories. SMC Asia, Car Distributors Corporation, the official importer and distributor of BMW in the Philippines, has officially introduced the all-new BMW 1 Series and the new BMW X1. Right now we are in what we call the Papa Bear Activity Center here in BGC and we have BMW Joyfest 2020. So BMW Joyfest is a way for BMW to reach out, to go out of the comfort of our own dealerships and we reach out to our customers by bringing them our cars, we let them test drive, we bring our new cars out so they can see uh, while they're out here with their families. And also we have some uh, very nice deals also available for customers who want, to, who want to avail. The new 1 Series 118i Sport variant is powered by a 1.5-liter three-cylinder gasoline engine made it to a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission that is capable of giving out 140 horsepower and 220 Nm of torque. The all-new 1 Series, it is different architecture already. New car is more efficient, has more interior room already, more spacious. It's really the perfect uh, first BMW. Passengers in the rear are the main beneficiaries, while a large load compartment adds even more versatility. Available as a five-door only, the all-new BMW 1 Series is 5 millimeters shorter than its predecessor at 4,319 millimeters. On the other hand, powering the M135i X-Drive is a 2.0-liter, four-cylinder turbo gasoline motor paired with an eight-speed Steptronics sports gearbox that is capable of giving out 306 horsepower and 450 Nm of torque. The M135i is the top of the range 1 Series. It has 306 horsepower, a turbocharged 2 liter 4 cylinder engine, and a 4 wheel drive 8 speed gearbox. It's really uh, 0 to 100 in 4.7 seconds, 250 km per hour top speed. It's really a very high performance 1 Series. Meanwhile, the new X1 S Drive 18D X Line is equipped with an 8-speed Steptronic transmission that is teamed up with an engine that generates 150 horsepower and 350 Nm of torque. The new X1, no? there's an improvement in the design of, from the previous X1, the F48. A bigger grille, new wheels, and a upgraded interior as well. Then we also are introducing a new engine variant, which is the 18D, 150 horsepower, 350 newton meter of torque. May not sound like much, but when you drive it, it feels like a lot, lot more. Um, the car is very nimble and a lot of fun to drive. Volkswagen Philippines has recently launched its newest campaign, We Move You, with a performance featuring Mr. Pure Energy, Gary Valenciano, and a two-day showcase of the German car maker's current lineup of vehicles at the activity center of Trinoma in Quezon City. Gary Valenciano, more popularly known by his legions of fans and followers as Gary V and Mr. Pure Energy, had recently been signed in as Volkswagen Philippines' newest brand ambassador and the ideal personification of the car maker's We Move You campaign. We love working with Gary because First and foremost, we think that he's a perfect match to our brand. He embodies the qualities that we also would like to let the public know about our brand. You know, he's a very sincere individual. He's a very dedicated performer. He's committed to excellence and quality, and he really gives his all whenever he performs. These are the things that we believe our cars also bring to their owners. 
And so we're very excited to have him as part of the Volkswagen Philippines family. According to Volkswagen, the partnership between Volkswagen Philippines and Gary V has been seen to represent the perfect blend of one extraordinary performer and an equally iconic automotive brand. First of all, I'd like to welcome Gary Valenciano, Mr. Pure Energy himself, to the Volkswagen Philippines family. And I hope that his being part of the family will encourage a lot of you, our uh, prospective customers outside there, to consider Volkswagen when you're selecting uh, your next car purchase. And on that note, I'd like to invite uh, all of you, uh, whether you're shopping for a car or even just curious, to visit any of our Volkswagen dealerships. We have nine nationwide. Uh, stop in, check out the cars, and in fact, I encourage, uh, ask to test drive uh, the vehicle that you think you might like. That way you can really experience firsthand what it's like to drive a Volkswagen so that we can move you. Diamond Motor Corporation, or DMC, recently celebrated its 50th year in the local car industry with a Thanksgiving dinner held at the SMX Convention Center in SM Mall of Asia Complex. The celebration was attended by executives from Mitsubishi Motors Corporation and Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation, members of the media, and employees from all of their dealerships. Well, this is our 50th year. Uh, we've been in the industry the last five decades and we're celebrating our being one as family. Uh, we've been through many turbulent times during the last 50 years and uh, we're here not to forget not only the difficult times, but the good times that we've had as well. And more importantly, uh, we really are here to honor God. Uh, we honestly believe that if it wasn't for God and His help, uh, we probably would not have made it. So that's the main reason why we're celebrating our 50th. For 50 years, DMC has stuck with its commitment to its employees by providing strong leadership and successful business operation. Further, to give back to the people who make all the success possible, DMC honored their longtime employees, as well as top sales and service performers from 2018 and 2019. There are a lot of highlights actually that Diamond has uh, done. I mean, there's a lot of innovation over the last 50 years. Uh, I'm second generation, we're passing on to third generation, and I think one of the major achievements or accomplishments that Diamond has is basically being the first in the area of customer satisfaction. It's something that we focused in uh, in the early 90s. Um, we started with our personnel training, uh, sales training, parts, and even service technicians. We focused on developing our people, and we even had little competitions within the company wherein we had uh, service teams compete with each other and sales teams compete with each other. Um, this was way before even it was heard of, even in Asia, I believe. We also got the Best Service Facility Award in Asia in 1986. During the event, DMC reported that it contributed 18% to Mitsubishi sales in the past 10 years. DMC says that they're looking forward to more fruitful years in the industry. We're moving into the third generation and obviously we'd like to continue the tradition that our parents, I'm second generation like I said, so I'd like for the, my kids and the kids of the other partners to continue in that tradition which is to uh, help Diamond grow, help it be a blessing not only to our customers but also to our employees. Out of Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine, takes another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Dad, naflatan kami. Dad? Dad? You okay? Iwan mo na yan. Ako na bahala dyan. Let's go. Hatid ko na kayo. Tara. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's go! Thank you. You always have my...
my bag. Have fun. I will. I'm 36. I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. Suzuki Patara. Welcome back to this edition of Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's head to head, our feature to feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category. The Ford EcoSport and the Sangyong Tivoli are both subcompact SUVs that carry the legacy of their respective nameplates. Needless to say, these cars are both key players in the industry. This week on Head to Head, we're looking at their features and capabilities. Under the hood of the EcoSport is a 1-liter turbocharged inline-3 EcoBoost unit that is capable of producing 123 horsepower and 170 Nm of torque. These figures are coupled with a 6-speed automatic transmission. On the other hand, powering the Tivoli is a 1.6-liter diesel engine that gives out 136 horsepower and 324 Nm of torque. This diesel engine is coupled with a 6-speed automatic transmission. For the EcoSport, it showcases these redesigned fog lights and headlights. Over at the sides, these subtle curves add emphasis to the EcoSport's body. Other recognizable exterior features of the EcoSport are these unique A-pillars which create curves at the bottom. Meanwhile, the Tivoli's character lines that slope towards the center to create a more dynamic sense of movement. There is also a larger air intake at the bottom of the front bumper which improves the engine's heat efficiency. The headlights. On the other hand, guarantee improved visibility in various conditions. It's time to have a look at the interior of the EcoSport and the Tivoli. The interior of the EcoSport is dominated by an all-black material. From the dashboard down to the seats, everything is wrapped in black leather. The cabin offers ample space for the driver and the passenger, and there's even extra space for luggage if you need some. On top of that, the EcoSport offers a panoramic sunroof. When it comes to the infotainment system, the EcoSport comes available with an 8-inch SYNC 3 touchscreen integrated with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Audio is courtesy of 7 speakers. Space is enough for 5 people to fit inside comfortably. If you're in need for more trunk space, the rear seats are foldable, which allows more luggage. For the infotainment system of the Tivoli, features an 8-inch multimedia display that comes with an MP3, aux-in, Bluetooth, Bluetooth, and USB connectivity. Let's talk about the safety and security. The EcoSport comes equipped with an anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, stability control, ISOFIX, and 6 airbags. While the Tivoli comes with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake distribution and brake assist. Immobilizer, Smart Keyless Entry System, Burglar Alarm, Rear View Camera, and Rear Parking Sensor. That's our head-to-head -head this week, spotlighting the Ford EcoSport and the Sangyong Tivoli, two subcompact SUVs that stand out on their own. More about the automobile here in Autofocus as we usher in our segment featuring the autos of the world, spotlighting concept cars as well as newly launched and about to be launched automobile models from around the world. For your exciting viewing in this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine, we have the 2020 Renault Traffic Space Class. Let's watch this. Renault Pro Plus has launched a striking black edition of its award-winning new traffic commercial vehicle, featuring exclusive design touches and the latest convenience technologies as standard. 
available in panel van and crew van versions. The new edition features black alloy wheels, black edition badging, black edition graphics, piano black grille surround, piano black styling blade and lower grille, and body color side moldings. Several technologies are made standard on the Traffic Black Edition, delivering greater convenience and enhanced comfort for driver and passengers. The rear parking camera makes it easier for the driver when attempting to maneuver the traffic in tight situations and means they don't have to rely solely on the rear parking sensors and wing mirrors. The climate control settings ensure the cabin is always at the right temperature. Customers can choose between the efficient 2.0-liter Energy DCI 145 Turbo Diesel, capable of returning up to 52.3 mpg and CO2 emissions from 188 gram per kilogram, and the more powerful 2.0-liter Energy DCI 170, which can achieve up to 51.4 mpg from 187 grams per kilogram CO2. Both engines are available with a manual gearbox or six-speed EDC automatic transmission. I'm 36, I'm a husband, a manager and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. The new Suzuki Vitara. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back to Autofocus. Our special feature is next. Established in the Philippines in early 2015, Hypertech Armored Cars Corporation is not in any way a new player in the car armoring industry. This week on a special feature, Hypertech takes us on their car armoring process. Watch this. Hypertech's armoring system is integrated after the production process without changing its exterior appearance. Their method of installation also offers the highest possible protection to the vehicle occupants against the effects of a bomb blast, collisions, and impacts from either side of the vehicle. Hypertech's management and staff have a combined experience of 70 years in the car armoring industry. This rich history makes them a top company that specializes in designing and producing armored vehicles, including executive SUVs, luxury sedans, special-purpose tactical vehicles, and others for the civilian market. Let's hear more about the company's origin from. Hyprotech started uh, 2015. Myself and uh, my co-workers, we used to belong to a uh, multinational company which was based in Cebu, a Mactan Export Zone. Uh, it's a little known fact that you know uh, the Philippines used to produce world-class uh, armored vehicles. 
since the Field Trust Bank Group was one of my major clients and I had a good working relationship with them, I uh, approached them with the idea of why not start a new armoring company here based in Manila with myself and my staff building it from scratch. Uh, that was the time when we just came out with the uh, new Fortuner. So we were able to develop it and uh, we were able to come up with uh, better products than what we used to do in Cebu before. Uh. Mr. Abril Tolentino, Vice President for Sales at Hyprotech, noted that the transition went smoothly because the armored vehicles industry has been constantly expanding. This is why, even with the decades and decades of expertise, Hyprotech ensures that its production crew has undergone training in Europe and constantly coordinates with foreign consultants. This is their way of keeping up with the ever-growing industry. Hindi naman kami masyado na hirapan eh, because you know uh, our staff, we've been doing a lot of cars for export and the local market in Cebu. We're able to develop based on new products. We're continuously working with our foreign consultants and suppliers. So. Our research and development is uh, ongoing, so no matter what new uh, car that comes out, we can easily adapt the armoring design for that. The market is expanding because, well, for one thing, Filipinos have uh, more uh, purchasing power. Actually, the growth of the uh, armored uh, vehicle industry, it runs in parallel with the uh, expansion of the high-end cars. Like right now, you can see a lot of high-end sports utility vehicles and even sports cars. It's the same thing with the armored vehicles. With the uh, ongoing affluence of the Philippines, they have more buying power. Now, because of this, the need for security is highlighted. That's why we're continuously growing. According to Mr. Tolentino, their armoring services depend on what level of armoring the car needs. He gave us an overview of what each level means. Basically, level 4 protection uh, implies handgun protection, which is basically 9mm, 45 caliber, 38 caliber, up to 44 magnum. That's level 4. Level 6, on the other hand, is assault rifle protection, which is uh, M16, M14, AK-47, M60, and uh, light machine guns. Uh, we can also produce higher and higher protection cars like the Level 7 and um, VR7 and VR9 equivalent cars because we've already done this before. If you're curious about which cars Hyprotech does armory services for, Mr. Tolentino tells us about it. The most popular right now is what we have behind me is the Land Cruiser 200. But there's a shift now that yung clients gusto nila medyo low-key. So we've been doing a lot of Fortuners, Hilux, even vans, sedans, we've done the Camry. And soon we'll be developing then the, some European sedans as well. Our usual production is 60 to 90 days for level B6. But if it's the Fortuner and Land Cruiser Hilux we're talking about, we're very familiar with this usually 60 days or less. Now, for 2020, we will up the production cycle. Hopefully, we can cut it down to 45 days. Let's take a closer look at the car armoring process of Hyprotech, explained by key account specialist, Mr. Carlo Illusorio. So what we do is uh, we, we strip down the car and then we, we, we weld the ballistic steel. Like for, for example, this guy, this car is a Land Cruiser 79 where um, it's currently being armored uh, for the level 6 package. This is the uh, bomb proof. So uh, as you can see, there are no penetration whatsoever from the back, from the, from the flooring until the ceiling. Also the firewall. The firewall is protected. As you can see, it's 360 degrees. There are no penetrations whatsoever. We do our best that there are no instances that uh, penetration will occur. And right now, you can see this car is being stripped down, uh, ready to be armored already. So as you can see, what they're doing is they're taking out the parts and then uh, for it to be uh, going on the next stage of armoring. So right now, this is called the uh, bringing back the state of the car to its OEM state. As you can see, what he's doing right now is putting back all the parts to make it look like it's OEM. And this is the stage where 
we uh, put back all the seats, put back the uh, liners, and uh, we put back the uh, electronic equipment in the car. Right now, this is the installation of the uh, run flats. Our run flat system is uh, even if you are shot at your, at your wheels, at your tires, it will still run at uh, approximately around 60 kilometers per hour. And usually this is done, for example, you encounter an ambush, there's still a possibility for you to run as far as you can. So this is the last stage where we uh, properly align the vehicle. So in order for problems of suspension wouldn't occur. This is when we set it off for delivery for our client. Right now we have our finished product where uh, as you can see the ballistic glass uh, can go down. This is usually meant for uh, tolls, expressways and parking. And uh, as you can see here we have the overlap system. This is to ensure, for example, you're shot here in this part, uh, the bullet wouldn't uh, penetrate. And also, right now, uh, I would like to show you that we upgrade also our brakes and our suspensions. As you can see, this is an upgraded uh, rotors and also the brake system. As you can see also right now, uh, it's like no different than an OEM car because it just has the bulletproofing inside. Here. Here's our design for the uh, Land Cruiser uh, 200. This is a uh, ballistic uh, bulletproof door for the for the back, and it is openable this way. So for our bulletproofing, uh, our price ranges cost around 2.3 to 3.5. It depends on the car, the level and uh, the specification that the client wants to uh, avail. Hypertech works closely with its network of international consultants and partners to ensure that they're only using quality materials for armoring vehicles. We source our materials basically uh, worldwide. We get from North America, including the US, Colombia, Peru, and then we get it also from the Middle East, Dubai. From Europe, we get our armor plates from uh, Finland. You also get it from France, Belgium. For some specialized products, we get it from Germany. We also use just two components from uh, China, but one is the, just the uh, screw caps, and then the other one is the uh, window lifters, which are made to our design. With that, Hypertech highlights that their pricing is competitive, although it's not on the cheaper side. However, Hypertech ensures that their services excels in the value for money department. We're not the cheapest. But we're the uh, most value for money because in our case, we buy in bulk and we ship in bulk. So we're very competitive in pricing. This unit plus armoring, the cost would be around 8.6 million. If you bring in the car to us, roughly about 3.3 to 3.2 million. We asked Mr. Tolentino for his insight on the car armoring industry. It's still going to be there. It hasn't reached its plateau but it's going to keep on expanding. Well, from our perspective, later on, we want to go back to the export market. So actually, the local market would just be our uh, uh, stepping stone again. So you can find Hypertech in www.hypertecharmoredcars.com or you can visit our Facebook uh, Hypertech Armored Cars dash Carlo Elisorio and you can contact me at 0915-310-6683. That's it for our special feature on Hypertech Armored Cars Corporation and its car armoring process. We thank Mr. Abril Tolentino and Mr. Carl Illusorio for taking us around the company. And up next is another exciting feature on Autos of the World. This time around the 2020 Volkswagen Touareg R. Let's watch this. 
Volkswagen is set to add a range-topping new premium model to its flagship Touareg line, the Touareg R. The versatile model's 340 kW plug-in hybrid drive offers an innovative blend of superlative performance and electric efficiency. When the battery is sufficiently charged, the new SUV always starts in the all-electric e-mode for zero emissions. The battery capacity is designed so that the Touareg R can cover the average daily commute under electric power. Like all Touareg models, the new R version comes with permanent all-wheel drive as standard. Four motion and the powerful drive system means the Touareg R has also been homologated for maximum trailer weight of 3.5 tons. The premium model can cope with this maximum trailer weight even in E-mode. As the first plug-in hybrid SUV in the world, the Touareg can also be fitted with the trailer maneuvering system Trailer Assist. And yet another first, the Touareg will be available with Travel Assist for the first time. The premium model will be the first Volkswagen to boast assisted driving up to a speed of 250 km per hour. The new flagship model was designed by Volkswagen R Performance brand, which traditionally develops the sportiest models in the Volkswagen range. The Touareg R represents a paradigm shift. It is the first Volkswagen R model to feature a plug-in hybrid drive. It is also the first time a hybrid model has been the most highly powered Volkswagen. The extremely well-appointed Touareg R which features the black style exterior design package along with 20-inch alloy wheels and R-line interior trim is set to enter the market in the second half of 2020. The SUV product line is currently available with one turbocharged petrol engine, TSI, and three turbocharged diesel engines, TDI. The V6 TSI engine delivers a power output of 250 kW as the V6 TDI, the Touareg is available with two output levels, 170 kW and 210 kW. The current most powerful Touareg is a V8 TDI with 310 kW. Volkswagen is adding a range topping model in the form of the new Touareg R. Dad, Dad. You okay? Iwan mo na yan. Ako na bala dyan. Let's go. Hatid ko na kayo. Tara. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's go! Thank you. You always have my back. Have fun. I will. I'm 36, I'm a husband, a manager, and still very good looking. In two hours, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, it's time to play. The new Suzuki Vitara. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph
welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate here on Autofocus. So we have our second car review this week. Here's an offering from Sangyong that possesses most of the things one would look for in a pickup. From its design down to the smallest details, the 2019 Muso no doubt comes strong with its own identity. Find out more about it here. Watch this. In this car review, we have the 2019 Sangyong Musa 2.2 liter 4x2 AT. Under the hood of the Muso is a powerful 2.2 liter turbocharged diesel engine that delivers 179 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. These figures are mated to a 6 speed automatic transmission that transfers all power to two wheels. All Musa variants are 4x2 and come with an automatic transmission, except for the two Musa Grand variants that come in 4x4 and a manual transmission, respectively. The Musa also offers various driving modes, which a driver can choose from depending on the road condition that the pickup will be taking on. Meanwhile, handling is managed by coil spring at the rear suspension. For a pickup, this setup is uncommon, although the Musa is not one to miss road imperfections as you could feel a little roughness here and there. Basing on the exterior of the Muso, there's no doubt that this pickup showcases a masculine design. Up front, the radiator grille highlights the front fascia of the Muso, more so the halogen headlamps with daytime running lights. Character lights are also present, especially just below the belt line. This gives the Muso's body more definition. The Muso's side mirrors are power folding and adjustable with LED turn signal integrated. Over at the rear, the taillights are bigger than those of Musa's predecessors, though the change is not that visible. Also, the cargo bed may be shorter than the previous ones, but it's deeper and wider and could carry more baggage. The Musa powers through the road with 18-inch alloy wheels, adding extra character to the pickup. Let's hop on in our featured vehicle. The interior of the Musa could compete as one of the best in the market, and it's because the Korean car maker put the driver's and passenger's comfort and convenience first before anything else. For one, the cabin is spacious and is not cluttered at all. The buttons and controls are in the right places and within reach of the driver. The speed-sensing power steering wheel comes with a heater, which makes up for the fact that it comes with tilt configuration only. But the real show stealer here is the seats, wrapped in a premium brown napple leather. The driver's seat is heated and ventilated and is 8-way power adjustable. Meanwhile, the rear seats come with the seat heaters as well. For added convenience, the Musa is equipped with dual-zone auto climate control with rear vents. Plus, the window on the driver's side comes with one touchdown option, among other interior features of the Musa. The infotainment system of the Musa comes with an 8-inch LCD smart audio with USB Apple CarPlay and Android Auto navigation. The six speakers handle the enjoyment while traveling. When it comes to safety and security, the Musa is equipped with features such as anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution remote keyless entry, rear view camera, and six airbags. That was the 2019 Sangyong Muso 2.2-liter 4x2 automatic transmission. An offering from the Korean car maker that changes the game in the pickup industry. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we're going to be talking about brakes. Car brakes are pretty are simple enough to understand. Step on the pedal, car stops. Not much science, right? The reason it works that way is because modern braking works so flawlessly, everybody literally takes it for granted. Those things that you hear in the news that, oh, bumanga, sumemplang, dal nawala ng preno, that's not true. That almost never happens. Even on a clunky Jeep, if there is brake fluid in there somewhere, that Jeep will stop. So there's no such thing as you lose brakes. No, that's not true. And on all cars now, you have a set of these. This brake. I'll dispel the first myth. Brakes do not stop your car. No. Tires stop your car. Brakes 
slow your car down, but tires are the ones that do the stopping. That's myth number one. Myth number two, disc brakes are better than drum brakes. Loaded question, but generally, no. <laughs> they work exactly in the same way, and actually in some instances, drum brakes are actually better. That's why you will still see majority of the cars here have disc brakes in the front, drum brakes at the back. Even the newer ones like the Nissan Terra has still drum brakes at the back because it works. It's efficient and it's almost foolproof. <laughs> All right, myth number three. Nangangalawang yung preno ko eh. Normal ba yun? Yes, it's very normal. The material that your brake disc is made from is cast iron. It has to be cast iron because once this metal gets hot, it becomes somewhat malleable and ductile, which causes it to grip the brake pad even more. So it's somewhat sticky in metal terms. It cannot be stainless steel, it cannot be aluminum, it cannot be plastic, it cannot be brass, and it definitely cannot be gold. So yes, if it's iron or bakal, mangangalawang yan, and that's perfectly normal. So this is what your stock disc brake looks like. Flat, pancake-looking frisbee thing. What you'll see most in people put is something like this. Same size as stock but has dimples, sometimes holes, has these slots. These are referred to as racing brake rotors. Now, the big question, will my car stop better if I put this as opposed to this one? The honest answer, if you're just driving along Metro Manila, no. Your car will not stop faster because you have this. It will look better, but no. It will not reduce your stopping distance in any way. So why bother do you have stuff like this? Well, as the name implies, racing brake discs. This comes into play once you do actual racing. With the slots and the dimples, this is a bit cooler. You will not brake any better because you have this, but it will allow you to stay on the race course longer by a lap, maybe two laps. And that's important in racing. Before your brake starts to fade and you have to go back to the pits. This is where this comes in. It cools down faster in a, in a racing environment. But it will also come to a point that it will not cool down no more if you abuse the car too much. So once that happens, your brakes will start to fade, you will start to lose brakes. Then that means, okay, time to stop, time to go to the pit, cool down. These are actually the other equation of braking. And if you do want better braking, easiest and fastest is just, just change one of these things. The brake pads. They're cheap enough, they're plentiful enough, and they're pretty easy to do. You have a set of tools, a couple of friends, you can do this in one afternoon. So we have here different brake pad sizes, and it does not take a genius to see which can brake better. Obviously, the big brake pad versus the small brake pad. And this is where the third part of the equation comes in, the brake caliper. <laughs> this is your brake pad. This wears down. Its job is to keep wearing down. This is a friction material. This one presses along the disc here, both sides. If you don't have your foot on the pedal, it's slightly gapped like that. But once you press it, it will press down. Then it will cause this to slow down. This gets worn out over time. And the easiest way to see if it needs changing, you just simply take a look at it. You can see through your wheels and through the brake pads, if it goes down to this line, then yeah, time to change. And as this goes down, as it wears down, you will feel your brake pedal get deeper and deeper and deeper. When you change to a fresh set of pads, your brake pedal automatically becomes firm again, just like magic. Now you can buy several different brands of this one. There's of course OEM, there's replacement, there's Japanese replacement, there's Korean replacement, there's brand name performance brake pads. So which should you buy? get whatever you can afford. It's come to a point that there's no such thing as a bad brake pad. All of them will stop your car. It's just that if you want something better, then you go for the brake pad brands that are known for performance, like Brembo is one that does OEM pads. EBC is another one. Hawk is another one. They have a different compound here that once it reaches operating temperature, allows it to grip the brake this more causing you to slow down faster. Note I said slowing down, not stop. This is what actually applies the force from your foot down to the brakes itself. You can see these are the two brake pads here. That's the brake disc in there. So this will squeeze down on the brake disc once you press the pedal. This is a four-piston caliper. 
Why is it four? Because there are literally four pistons here. So just one, two, three, four. There's four cylinders here. Your normal car has one, maybe two pistons at the most. That's it. This is a big brake setup. Why is it bigger? It's bigger than this standard rotor that's supposed to be for this Civic. And the way that it works, very simple. Physics. The longer the distance here, this is basically a lever. The longer the distance, the more force you can generate by applying it on the end. So this is it. That's how big brakes work in essence. And then another myth that is proliferating has to do with big wheels. Why do all these supercars have big wheels that everybody wants to emulate? It's because the need to house bigger brakes. It's not just because it looks nice and has more grip. No, they have big wheels to so house big brakes. That's the only reason why supercars have big wheels. And on a final note, I always like to say, you can have too much power, but you can never have too much braking. So when do you want to upgrade your brakes? Oh, trust me, you will know the time counts. You will have one or two close calls and will say, that, oh, ugh. I should need to upgrade my brakes already. So there, now you have a better understanding of how your car brakes works and is it worth upgrading the brakes or not? Now you know. And that's all the focus this week. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, we hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Don't forget to check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Until the next time, this has been Ray Louis Gamboa. Thank <laughs> you.